morning, good morning to Big or wherever you may be viewing us from. Welcome to Book Club Corner. My name is Jewel Green and I am your host. I take you through it with the authors, the literary arts, everything about books. So this is the space for bibliophiles, for readers, for lovers of the written word. Check in with us every Wednesday, 11 a.m. right here on Tobago updates and we're in studio in beautiful Scarborough Tobago you know we have to talk about the beauty of Tobago the beaches the sand and we're full in carnival mode if you are in to listen if you're in Tobago you're in the right place if you're in Trinidad get yourself on a boat I, I, I don't know what else to tell you get yourself on a boat a plane a sky that get yourself in Tobago we are in full carnival mode We've had some winners for the um, the Tobago Calypso Monarch. Congratulations to those who are moving forward in the competition. And listen, Tobago is just a buzz with activity. We've had one not so good, a fly in the ointment, as they say. And that is a situation that has happened d digitally with Tobago Updates Facebook page. But we don't cry. We rally through, right? There was either hacking because I know Facebook is not always the most reliable space. Sometimes people wake up to their Facebook pages being disappeared. That side eye for Facebook. The Facebook page is disappearing and the Tobago updates had a similar situation, but we're back on track and we're asking you to help Tobago updates Facebook get back to where it was in terms of its followers and likes. So please go like us um, Tobago updates page on Facebook, share it with your friends, make sure they go back and like it. And if you have content on the Tobago updates page, you came for an interview, be sure to share it somewhere and help Tobago Updates, you know, basically catch back its footing in the digital space. And let's get back to fetting in Tobago for Carnival. Listen, we have with us a fantastic guest. You know, all my guests are fantastic, as a matter of fact. If you hear me, you know, gush about them. I love all my guests. And today we have an amazing person here with us, a published author. We have Alicia Parihu and Alicia is with us today talking about her books. But before we get into that, Alicia, I am so happy you're here with us today. Listen, let let me let me tell the people what you're about. So Alicia is a three-time published author of Jonah's Journey and Other Works. She's the founder of Love and Life live streaming radio. She's the director of Orphans, Widows, Elderly Community Outreach Program Ministry, and she's a certified life coach and ordained religious minister. And as I had to tell Alicia, Alicia, I can't put everything on there, right? No, you can't. <laughs> I had to leave some things off. Welcome to Tobago Thank Updates. Thank you. Welcome to Book Club Corner. Thank you and so much. First of all, welcome to Tobago. Yes, I love it. I love. <laughs> I've always say I feel like Tobago is like a paradise. It's. Yeah. I feel like if I'm in Saint Lucia, Barbados, one of those yeah. those islands, it is really beautiful. It well, feels different. Don't feel. No. It is different. <laughs> No, it. You're in paradise. Yes, you know? it is. And I'm I'm happy to be the reason after five years, five years yes. that you're here in Tobago. People, this is what we call literary tourism, yes. right? When you come to Tobago for books, for events like this, and I'm always happy when persons can come. We don't force the authors to come. If you can't, you know, it is what it is. But we're so happy when you come, and you get to sip. On some coconut water Sip on some or coconut. wine from Joe Fields or any of my good friends, suppliers of local wines. Cheers to you, Cheers, Alicia. Thank you so much. <laughs> and listen, if you if the authors and you have a booking to come as a guest on Book Club Corner and you get yourself to Tobago from Trinidad, we will have drinks for you. We will have a little laugh, a little listen, we have a good time here on Tobago Updates Book Club Corner. So Get here, get in Tobago, get into the spirit of carnival. And if you're not into the mass, listen, it have plenty beach you could lie down on and relax, relax. yourself. Yes. Bring your book. 
get your copy of Juno's journey, bring your book, sit on a beach somewhere, chill out, go Charlottesville, go Speyside, go, listen, Roxburgh, wherever, and find a really nice beach. They're not hard. One of my favorites is Buku. What's your favorite beach? I like um, Pigeon Point. I like Pigeon Point too. But too much I always be on Pigeon Point, That's too much of all. I have to go somewhere <laughs> that I haven't been. Yeah. Listen, a friend of mine was telling me she loves green. She said for the last few months, this is a beach close to um, Buku traffic lights. Uh -huh. She has. She said for the last few months, Grange has been, she said, listen, like just ripple less. Just calm. I said, but that's wow. how that's something like a carcass basil. Just literally nothing. And which, which one is the one with the pink sand? I heard of the pink sand beach. I don't know. My husband keeps telling me about it. And he has yet to carry me there, folks. Hint, hint. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think this is one of those beaches that you have to get to by sea. Oh, okay. So you have to take a boat to get there. Right. Or if you take, um, if you go by foot, it's quite obvious. Oh. I don't like hiking too, too much. I might have <laughs> Yeah, I like easy hikes. Yeah. Yeah, give me a little A two, nice trick. Yeah, two-minute hike. Yeah. The, Somebody's out there saying a two-minute hike. What is that? <laughs> a little bit of hike. <laughs> I don't care. And so we're going on a quick break. And when we come back, we're here with Alicia Perihu. And she writes under the pen name Sharon Foster. And we're going to be here with her chatting about her book, Jonah's Journey, sipping on some coconut water right here in paradise, right? Yes. Carnival season here in Tobago. Get your drink. Get your snack. Don't go far, come right back to Book Club Corner and we'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Book Club Corner. I'm your host, Jewel Green, and we're chatting here with Miss Alicia Parigo and her book, Jonah's Journey. As we said earlier, you know, we're in full carnival mode. And listen, all those who are not in carnival body, like myself, right? We're talking to you. Put on your costume and go on the road. It have worse than looking at you that on the road these days. And I'm not saying that to shame anybody. I'm saying that empower yourself, right? Like yourself, raise your self-esteem, love yourself a little bit. And, you know, what I'm saying, make, be comfortable. But don't let the fact that you may not have a carnival-ready body, right? Snatched up to the hilt, right? The stomach, flat, flat, flat. Go out on your road and enjoy yourself. That's what carnival for. A little release and a little revelry, right? I think I had to share that because we're so hard on ourselves sometimes. But we're getting into Alicia's book. Alicia, your book, the name of your book is Juna's Journey. When I saw the name of the book, I said, oh, like, I wonder if it's like, you know, because before I read a book, I like to imagine what is in the book, right? I pick up the cover and I said, oh, I wonder if this is like, you know, a fiction of... Epic proportions. We just had a shark attack in Tobago. I wonder if Jonah and a shark. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tell us what this book is about. I mean, from the A to Z. Somebody picks up the book. Uh, they have not read the back. Right. They look at the cover. Right. Tell us what this book is supposed to be doing for this person. Okay. And why they should buy your book. Okay. Yeah. Jonah's journey. The name Jonah is in the Bible. It's mm -hmm. biblical. Yeah. Um, it's a metaphor for um, what's what's happening with my husband. Mm -hmm. This is actually his his, his story. memoir. Yes. So is. you were his ghostwriter. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Yeah. Um, this is the third part, the, the third book in a five part series that I'm working on. Ah, right. Very good. I started with my memoir. And then the prayer guide and then his story. Mm -hmm. So this is like a prequel, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. So Jonah is he was a runner. He was running from his purpose and his call from God. Mm -hmm. Which in essence is what my husband was also doing from day one. Yeah. From before he was even born. He had a yeah. calling upon his life and a mandate. And he kept running away from it. And it almost destroyed him and swallowed him swallowed him up literally just like this will mm -hmm. because if you know the story of Jonah in the Bible he was running away from God's calling and then um, he went to hide mm -hmm. and 
the, the sea started to rage and oh, rebel, yeah. and they had to throw him overboard, and mm -hmm. then he was swallowed Probably. by a whale. But Jonah was, was, was straight out disobedient. My husband was too. <laughs> you said it, huh? Not me. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Don't come for me, people. The lady describing what was going on with her husband. So, I always have this question, and I think this is a good time to ask it. You know, is a destiny made for you? Or are you made for that destiny? You are made for your destiny. Mm -hmm. You are made for your destiny. And no matter how far you run, mm -hmm. God is going to orchestrate it in such a way yeah. that you're going to come back to your destiny. I never liked that perspective. But, you know, it is a perspective. I've heard it before, but I've never liked it. And I'll tell you why. I, f I feel, and this, of course, this is just my of opinion. Of course, we discussed it. This is just my opinion. I always feel that, you know, the destiny must be made to fit you. It's like, like a shoe, you know, we can't squeeze ourselves into this destiny. And maybe it's a bit of both. Maybe it is you a know? bit of both. Maybe yeah. it's a bit of both where you have a destiny and it can, it can be molded as you change, mm -hmm. as you grow. Yes. Maybe the destiny itself can grow, you know, to yeah. fit and suit you and what you'd like to do. Because I always feel we as individuals, you know, when we talk about the Bible and us being made in the image of God, based right. on what the Bible is saying, right? Because yes. there, there are many religious books and many mm -hmm. religious perspectives. But when we look at that book and what it's saying, how we were made, it really looks at um, us, the individual, being so important in terms of this relationship with this, um, you know, this immortal entity mm -hmm. and i i always thought to myself you know if that is so important it must be that we are the important our soul our because light is the important very part important, yes. and therefore anything is built to fit us and I, that's how i feel but half and half i can, half I can take half. half and half okay we'll take <laughs> half and half yes so jonah they're running disobedient and got swallowed by this wheel yes I don't think I want to be in no whale stomach. It's not an uh, it's not a comfortable place to be, but yes. sometimes God has to place us. Metaphorically, yes, but sometimes God has to place us in is in uncomfortable situations and circumstances in mm -hmm. order to get our attention. Alicia, as you say that, I have to ask, and I have to put it out there, and uh, give me your feedback on this. Does anything come from being in in a comfort zone? What, no. what comes from no, that? Nothing can grow from that. Mm. Nothing can grow from mm -hmm. that. Because it's, it is in our heartache and in our pain that revelation comes. If yes. you look at all the great people in history, it always started off as a problem or an uncomfortable situation. Uh, even the makers of, of the light bulb, penicillin, any, everything came out from some sort of distress, mm -hmm. turmoil, yeah. and out of it birthed beauty. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at everything that we are going through in life. Mm -hmm. What is, what am I being taught in this situation? Yes, what's the message? What is the message? And it's not always for us. Sometimes it's for us to encourage someone else when yeah. you come out of it. <sighs> this life, it's, and that's why I found your book was so important. It brought such an important message, a message of redemption, because, and I think that's what the story of Jonah is trying to tell us. Correct. Like your book, I mean, the title is, is you know, there's a parallel there, yes. but that's where it stops. That's, there's yeah. a very individual um, story happening here, yes. and it's not a repeat of this story about Jonah in the Bible. No. It's just that. You know, there are so many parallels. Yes. Yeah. So when we look at, you know, from this book, um, I was reading about Gurley. Yes. Tell me about Gurley. Tell the listening, re you know, viewing public about Gurley and her, her place in the story right. with this Jonah. Okay. G Gurley is the one who birthed Jonah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Jonah is the name of the character yes. in the book. Um, so I named him that because he was running, yeah. right? So my husband became Jonah, mm -hmm. literally. But Gurley was his mom. I say was because she's passed on. Mm -hmm. But her prayers for this son, it preceded her death. 
because even after she died, what she had prayed for was still latched onto him mm -hmm. until he became all that he was destined to be because when he was born she prophesied that he was meant to be somebody great and wonderful and you know somebody that has a story to tell mm -hmm. and even though he was running from that her her fate made sure that it happened even after yes. she passed on yes I, listen this is this is so like lion king you know like that that part in lion king where they hold up the, yes. the baby and they you know they make this proclamation on it you know and, and i think a lot of persons have and a lot of different religions and beliefs have this time where we spend pouring something positive into our children yes as they are young very very young it's so important to you do know that. we speak on them yes and you know very important i'm going to put this out there in the public space for those parents who don't particularly understand what maybe what we're talking about we're talking about putting into the atmosphere into the ethos something good something positive about your children from young um, a lot of times I hear parents go to the negative, you know, you'll never amount to anything. You're you'll, so you'll... stupid. You're just like your father. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes you're just like your mother. Yes. All sorts of things. And they didn't mean it any way, good way. No, right? they didn't mean it in a good way. <laughs> they didn't mean it in a good way. And we know that. So what, what I'm saying is that I'm just encouraging parents, those who are around the children, Yes, young children, but as well, your young adults, your teenage, pre-teenage, keep speaking positive things Correct. into them, right? They Correct. do make mistakes, right? The, the definition of not being an adult is an undeveloped brain. When we say undeveloped, yes, they have a brain. But remember, we're talking psychology and physiology and biology. It isn't finished developing. Correct. And we will make mistakes as young people. We will do things that we, you know, maybe we think about later. We should not have done, but it's all a learning process. It's all isn't a learning it? process. And we too have done the foolish things when we were younger. Oh, well, that's, the, we... that's when you should make them, <laughs> yes. right? In your youth. Don't yes. wait until your bones hard to be doing stupidness. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Right? So yeah, support our young people. Speak something. Give them positive. some grace. Yes. Oh, say it again. Give, give, them, give some them some grace. grace. Please give them some grace. We need it so much. And even as adults. So speak something positive into your children. They're going to school. We're hearing some very negative things happening in terms of bullying at Mason Hall School. That's a school in Mason Hall in, in um, Tobago. We're hearing some bullying stuff and we're saying, let us look for a positive where are these children going to end up and land next how can we turn this Sorry. around yes. to be something positive Correct. right what is their destiny what is their mission what did they come to earth to do correct and perhaps we need to focus on those things and give children Give those students in Mason Hall and all students, because I'm hearing other things as well from other schools. It's not just Mason Hall, right? And Trinidad, we have a problem with it right now. <sighs> it's across the board, yes. and children are angry. It's something yes. happening, and we're not facing the fact. Because when we say children are angry, obviously parents are going, what am I to be vexed about? What do I have to be sour about? The life going good. They don't have to do nothing. I do everything. Your children are human beings. They, are. they have feelings, right? So, listen, children came out of COVID extremely angry. Correct. And we never dealt with it. Never dealt with it, no. And we need to deal with it. So when we talk about, uh, that was a segue. Out of and that's girly, an important one, yes. yes. Out of girly trauma, right? Speaking something positive into her son. Yeah. And looking towards his future, the next generation. Yes. Where is my son going? Where is he taking our next generation? generation? Correct. And she spoke those positive words into him. And he Despite decided... Despite what she had been going through. Because yeah. she was married to a man who beat her mercilessly. Mm -hmm. And he was a drunk. He was a village bully. Mm -hmm. Bullying again. Yeah. And everybody was scared of this man, including her. Mm -hmm. But she stuck it out with him, you know, um, because she, I mean, she didn't want the, the, the family unit to be split apart. And it was, this was in the 19, 
what, 60s? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had a, they, they, their own stigmatization back then. Yes. So it was a whole lot of stuff that was going on with Gilly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she was a very strong woman, very resilient, mm -hmm. and very, had, had so much faith. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you may be listening out there, and you may be a girly. Correct. Right? In a situation, male or female, we're just using a parallel. In a situation where you're being abused, yeah, it's not the best situation for you and your children and you need to get out, get out now. Yeah. Watch me in my eyeballs. Get out now. It's not going to get any better. No, it did not for good. No, it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. And this, you know, imagine you, you've written a book that is talking about the destiny of this person and looking at so many issues. Yes. Of um, you know, domestic abuse. Yeah. You're right. And, and how are we, this person's perspective in terms of who am I? What should I be doing? Yes. Where am I going in life? Yes. Talk to us about after, you know, this girlie went through her trauma and she's now passed away. Yes. What happened with girlie's children, girlie's offspring? What happened after, you know, girl, you put the word out there into the universe, my child is going to be great. Well, and he decided, not me. No. <laughs> I, mean, he, I don't know who you're talking he, about. He, he, he just wanted to do his own thing. Mm -hmm. He was very rebellious. Yes. And though, I mean, when he was younger, he used to break the law. And then when he reached into his 20s, uh, he decided, okay, I, I don't want to be going to jail or anything like that. But he was still rebellious. Mm -hmm. He still liked to do his own thing. And the book will go through a whole lot of the things that he used to like to do. <laughs> yeah, if you want to find out what, what this journal was What's, getting up to, his shenanigans, you get a book. We're not selling out any of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... Um, her offsprings was three of them. Mm -hmm. He was her firstborn son. Mm -hmm. She has a lastborn son and she had a first daughter. The first mm -hmm. daughter is a pastor as well. Mm -hmm. She's doing very well. Very yeah. Um, her, her daughter is a doctor. Her other son is a pilot. So, you know, mm -hmm. that generation is, is going very well. I'm very her happy last born, he's a little bit rebellious too, but, yes. but he's coming along. Yes. And then there's my husband who's now a pastor. Mm -hmm. He's a mentor. He's a certified life coach as well, mm -hmm. getting these young boys off the streets. Yeah. So y'all are doing this life coach business together. Yes, we are. Oh, that's and that beautiful. is where the orphans, widows and elderly community outreach program ministry is about. Mm -hmm. As I tell people, we are pastors, but we are pastors with a difference. Mm -hmm. We don't have a box church. We go out there yeah. and see who needs the help, including the orphans, the widows, and the elderly. And right now, we are in the process of building a children's home mm. from zero to 18 years old, both boys and girls. Wow. Right now, it's it's in the process of uh, which, tongue and country. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we also have the endorsement of the Children's Authority right. as well. So, that is, so we're looking to start building early mm -hmm. next year mm -hmm. uh, after the release season yeah. and hoping that by December of next year, we begin to start to fill those homes because the Children's Authority will mm -hmm. be able to help us because they know they're the body that controls that and they'll be able to send us to send the right children to us and all of that. Yes. So all of that was built through the pain that I suffered whilst being, even before I was married to Jonah. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonah gave me some, str some well, stress. If, if, if Jonah doing all of these shenanigans, come on, <laughs> <the> man. <laughs> he put Mr. Shu some stress. I can imagine. Yes, he did. It was not easy. That's why I wrote the first book, yes. Standing on Shifting Sand, was uh, my memoir. Mm -hmm. And then the, the guide, I literally had to fast and pray for Jonah. Mm -hmm. You will not believe 31 days fast, 21 days fast, 14 days fast. Don't, don't say I can believe. I believe. And that is how the, the guide was built. Yeah. Right? And then I was like, okay, the people need to know why he was like this. Yes. The reason why he was emulating his father. Mm -hmm. Certain things happened with his father. That you have to read in the book as well. Yes. Yes. What eventually happened to his father after being so such a destructive force, not yes. only in their home but in the village in the community. as well. And this all happened in Mafiking Village in Mayaro. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I know Maya real well. Maya, listen, I'm from Arima, so we used to go down that whole length to bed, right? Yeah. yeah you <laughs> Even those waters are so rough, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I kid you not. You know, you'd get into Toko water, you, you walk out a bit, and you just drop in a hole. Yes, correct. <laughs> you, you drop in a That's hole. That's correct. And it's weird, but we couldn't swim at that age. Wow. We were small. Right. But we didn't kill us. And my, my father used to be out there because he was a swimmer. So okay. he would go far. Right. You'd see him small, 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 and my mother would be on the shore, and we'd be in it, girl. Wow. <laughs> You'd God in, was with you. <laughs> yeah, we'd be in that water. You drop in the hole. You come back out. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, that's that's a whole stress. I respect stress. Mariaro's speech. I, I tell you, you have to be so careful when you're yes. going to the beach. But yes. yeah, so he's from Africa, and a, you know, a fishing village, yes. a little fishing area, very country, yes. very community. Yes. Everybody's looking out for each other. Correct. And the, the good you're looking out, but you also know everybody's business. Yes. Correct. Everybody know everybody's yes, business. Yes, they can't even escape. Mm-mm. And it was the whole talk. Everything about yes. what was happening that in that household was the talk of the town. Even You'd have to what be happened strong after. To deal with that. Let me tell yeah. you, you'd have to be strong to deal with that. And you know, these are some of the some of the morphologies that we talk about um, when you hear psychologists talking in terms of domestic violence yes. and what the homes, uh, you know, being brought up in those. Homes that have domestic violence issues. And, you know, even though sometimes we want to keep the family together, yeah. whether male or female, because it happens on both sides of the gender, you want to keep the family together. It's not always the best idea. No, it's, it's not. It's not always the best idea. Just putting it out. You may think, oh, the children will grow up without a mother. They'll grow up without a father. How sad. Even sadder that they grow up angry and destructive themselves. Correct. Duplicating the behavior yeah. they saw. The toxic patterns of their mother or their father. Yes. Yeah. What what in you know in religious circles you would call um generational curses. curses Correct. Right? And we know that trauma can be carried on the DNA. Correct. So please parents, if you're in a undesirable situation, a situation that is unsafe for you and your children, whether you're a man or a woman. I advise you, get out early because your children will become traumatized. It will be carried on your DNA. You are going to carry it to the next generation. Unfortunately. And that now has to be dealt with. Okay? Yes. We, we ain't had that kind of time. No, we don't. To be breaking, what, mashing up and fixing, mashing up and, come now. Let's get it right from the beginning. Let's try. Okay? So just put in it out there. And if you need help, there are helplines. Call the police, and police, when they call you, please don't say anything stupid. <laughs> I'm just putting, putting that out, out there. there. Yeah, <laughs> please, don't say anything stupid. Like, big man like you and you gain licks, please don't say anything like that. It's very hard for them to reach out. Yes. Please be mindful of your job. And for those who do a good job and are helpful and understanding and, and you know, just ever embracing, making you feel to call and explain and tell... Thank you very much for the help you render to those who are in domestic violence situations when they come to you, that you're there for them. But there's the police, there's also a helpline. I don't have the number immediately, I'll get it. But there's a helpline you can call for domestic violence. There's also a helpline for mental health if you need support. But please don't stay in those situations. And children, please, as my mother used to say, tell, tell, tell everything. Tell everybody and tell everything. Go to school and find an adult, a teacher, a principal who you can trust. Let them know what's happening and let them see how they can help and assist. Right? And let somebody help you. It's not always easy, but we need to support our, you know. Right. And, you know, we talk about the perpetrators of domestic violence. And they have also been... Violated. victims yeah. of domestic violence or some sort of violence that got them there. I mean, yeah. we're not born damaged, are we? Correct. Well, I just said we have the trauma DNA, DNA, right? So, yeah, we might be, but, you know, the practices aren't in there quite yet. Yes, and, and it's it's learned when mm-hmm. they see it from mommy or daddy. It's learned. I mean, a child wouldn't, okay, a child wouldn't born being a customer, as we say, yeah. but they will listen, they will, they will observe, and oh, yeah. you know, and then they go to school and be like. So, it in is your experience quiet. with your ministry, what 
what are you seeing are you seeing patterns just repeating themselves yes it is how yes, do you deal is. with these things as where the, the life coaching and the counseling comes in you see we have to address the core issue first what was what was the hurt that started it from the first place mm -hmm. because a lot of these women they're just bringing the children into the world and they do not know how to be mothers they do not know how to to uh, have uh, this what we call a uh, positive impact on their children they only know negativity yeah the mother called them xyz so they are calling their the, the whole alphabet on the children yeah. so we have to go back to the foundation and correct it there and help the parents heal because we we counsel a lot of married men and women and uh, they i mean it's it's mind-boggling to know the issues that women and men face even in the christian community you know and it's yep. like you know they're smiling on the way to church and behind closed doors they, they oh my god it's 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 terrible and then the children see that and be like i don't want to be a pastor i don't really like mommy and daddy because i'm seeing this unhealthy pattern which had not been dealt with from inception so we have to know as you were rightly saying deal with it. Somebody has to deal with the issues at hand so it will not be perpetuated yeah. in generations to come. Because it will only get worse. It only will get worse. What we're seeing today is just a byproduct of what did not was not dealt with in the yeah. past. Please tell me about that again because yeah. I said, listen, we want to talk about what's happening now with our young people and not all young people it's happening no it's to, not but, all you know the ones that are not having the best life yeah. we we focus on that and we say you know oh i don't know what going on with these young people today and i say what do you mean you don't know we are the reason they're like that correct correct you, you pass a certain age you're the reason they're like that correct they don't make the salt they had some help that's correct when are that's you going correct. to to be accountable for the help yeah. you have rendered correct so where they are very correct when are you gonna do that and we have a generation of adults they just want to pretend that they have done nothing, nothing. wrong they're not culpable for anything, anything right it's just the young people out there wiling it out with no reason or rhyme I know. Blaming it on them. And you don't they want to talk about somewhere. all the things that you did when you, they were young, all the things you thought they did not see. Correct. And they would there sit down minding all their business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. They're like sponge. They absorb everything. Oh. Children absorb everything. Let me tell you a joke. My mother, very um, religious lady, and she taught also a marriage couple class. And she would carry us with her because we were that kind of family. Mommy and daddy going out, we and two. You know, leave your home or leave it with somebody. My mother did not believe in that at right. all. Wherever she going, you going to. She don't want to hear no story about what happened to you when she was not around. She right. wants to know everything she first hand, right? She wants to your Yes. Right. Oh. She took us. We were in primary school. She didn't want to leave us with anybody. And she took us with her to this marriage couple class. And who told her to do that? She would put us aside with our little coloring and, you know, our little toys and stuff. And a teacher pulled my mother aside. My mother was a, a, a teacher. Pulled her aside and said, Miss Green, I don't know what it is going on, but your second daughter, Golda, recess and lunchtime, she holding court with the children to tell them how to take care of the husband. <laughs> Mommy, mommy said her eye opened like saucer. She was like, well, when she hearing this, because she put us a little ways aside and thinking we there playing. But Golda is listening. Oh my gosh. My, my little, she said, that one? She know everything going on. Wow. Yeah. And she not saying a word until it's the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure everybody... So mommy said she had An to audience. tell that. Yeah, she said she hold in court with the little children. And this was in primary school, what, like standard two or something like that. <laughs> Telling them, the teacher say, mommy say how to take care of the husband. <laughs> she say. <laughs> so, you know, just to say you have to be so careful what the children absorb. Correct. Even when it may not be anything negative. 
Yes. Right? But it may not be appropriate for them at that age. You Correct. Know? And the son, you don't even know what they're hearing. Exactly. You, you wouldn't take even the know. sleeping? Who oh, knew? You wouldn't even know. Yeah, the little ears perked. <laughs> Yes. Reminding everything that going on up and down. I have a friend when she's a when she was small, she could have, as they come through the door in the evening, mommy and so and so pass in front of the house and this one hop. She said, listen, she was like, the, she liked the, the police. Watching everything. Yeah, she just documenting ma- everything. She, everything. And she telling every, all the aunties and she could tell you who passed on the street, what time they pass and how long they pass and where they went and when they come back down and if they had a bag and what was in it. <laughs> She the color of the bag too. <laughs> she said, "Girl, everything." So you have to be so careful with these children yes, because it's do. when they become adults, yes. when they start to be able to to communicate and flex themselves, that's yep. where that's when you start to find out. Correct. All the things happened to them, all the things they went through, yes. all the things they heard, and by that time, it's a bit difficult. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to yes. deal with. Yes. So tell me this book. What was your inspiration? Yes, you told me this is a memoir f- about your husband, right? But what was your inspiration to decide, I want to write a book that's going to be a memoir? Or did he say, well, you write a memoir about yourself. I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, since I was um, a student, mm-hmm. um, primary school, I always love writing. Yeah. I always excelled at mm-hmm. poetry, at literature, at English. When I went to high school, St. Charles High School, I always won awards and competitions for them. I always wanted to write. But circumstances had it that I couldn't at that point in time, and I put it on a shelf. Mm-hmm. And when this happened with my husband, the separation, In prayer, one day, the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to write and your books are going to reach a lot of people and it will help them in this very thing that you're going through. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear that. I was in pain. I I don't want to hear I'm helping people. (laughs) I want this pain to stop. Help me. (laughs) You tell me about people. You understand? That's Kevin Hunter say, help me. Me. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) Yeah. But as God panned it out, Mm -hmm. I realized this is what is needed. Mm-hmm. This is what can help and save future generations. Because when certain things happen in our marriages, we don't even realize that our husbands or our wives came with baggages. And with that baggages, it will come on us. Mm-hmm. And we, if we don't know how to deal with it, it's going to cause a bunch of separation and divorce and catastrophe that shouldn't even be. Correct. Now, I'm not saying that you should stay in an abusive marriage. I'm not saying that, but if you know Mm -hmm. that something is off, something is not right, Mm -hmm. seek God about it. Seek God because had I not, my husband would have been a literal dead man today. Uh You would read it in the book. Literal dead man. Listen, there's so so many things in this book that bring us to this right back to reality. And yes. what we're dealing with every day yes, as human beings. And before I go any further, shout out to St. Charles High School. St. Charles High School, yeah. Sister Adriana Noel. <laughs> My cousins went to that school okay. for some time before they, they migrated to Barbados. But right. they were at that school for some time. So shout out to that high school. Listen, we talk about, you know, the worst of the worst in terms of habits. Yeah. And the, the baggage that people bring into marriage and relationships, relationships right? Whole, yeah. Because you start a relationship, then you, you know, escalate to getting married. Yes. And parents out there, you're not, you're not making your children for yourself. You're not making your children for yourself. You're making them for those you're going to leave them with. Correct. Okay. So when you get, when you tired of telling them, pick up your clothes, pick up your clothes, pick up your clothes, pick up your clothes. Help, imagine help who, with the laundry. Yes. Help cook. Cut up this. You clean the yard. Did you do that? If you tired, imagine how their spouse is going to feel when yes. they get them. If you haven't helped them Correct. deal with that, right? Correct. So that's, please don't get weary of doing good works. 
Because you're, you're doing good works, right? As yes. a parent, that's what you're supposed to be doing. You you have to help them get ready for life. Yes, mold and shape them for life. Get ready for life. Get ready for the world of work or entrepreneurship. Putting something positive out into the universe. Taking care of themselves. Good self-esteem. Being able to wash some clothes. Cook some meals, right? Take care of somebody else from time to time. Yes. So parents, don't always help your children. Require your children to help you sometimes. Amen. Bring me a cup of tea. Yes. They're not your slave, but bring me a cup of tea sometimes. Because yes. some parents like to give, 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 and they don't make the children understand this is a give and take. Yes. And right? the responsibility as well. I'm attached. taking care of you and yeah. you also have, this is a family. You Correct. also have to take care yes. of me. So bring me a cup of tea. When you're going in the kitchen, take this plate and... Wash it. Exactly. <laughs> Don't dress it down. Wash, Wash it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're going on a quick break. There's so many little things we're going to get into when we get back from this break, including my most favorite time being read to on Book Club Corner. Alicia is going to be reading from a book. So while we're on a quick break, if you have to go take a bathroom break, right? Get your snack. You don't eat out all your snack. You don't drink out all your drink. Go and get some more snacks. Go and get another. And if you don't have any more, I always say, you know, there's all this government juice. Get, get a nice glass, put some ice in there, right? <laughs> Come right back to Book Club Corner. We'll be chatting with Alicia Parejo and her book, Jonah's Journey. So see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. It's a beautiful Wednesday here in Scarborough, Tobago. Welcome to Tobago Updates. If you just, um, you know, clicked on our live link, welcome to Book Club Corner. We're here with Alicia Parejo and her book, Jonah's Journey. And she's going to be reading from us, from her book now to us. So I'm going to admonish you, get comfy, get your drink, get your snack, right? And chill out with us as Alicia reads from her book, Jonah's Journey. Take it away, Alicia. Thank you so much, Joel. So I'm reading from chapter 7, Fowler's Snare, Psalm 91, verse 3. Surely he will save you from the Fowler's Snare. Albert started drinking heavily again, Albert being Jonah's father. Ever since that episode with his boss, he became depressed and was incapable of keeping a job for more than a couple of weeks. With the drinking came his uncontrollable anger that wreaked havoc on their family's life once more. The few years of peace after his second son was born, now just a distant memory, decimated to more brutality than ever before. Except now, the children, too, fell in the path of Albert Foster's unleashed fury. Many times, Gurley would take the blows meant for her children, as she stood as a barrier between them and their father's wrath. The children's lives were now disrupted with Albert's temper, as he somehow could not rid himself of the internal demons that terrorized him. The more he sought solace in the bottle, the more the evil overtook him. Albert was supposed to have given his life over to the Lord after God miraculously displaced him from the hot water that his unbridled anger placed him in. But now he turned to the wrong spirit, one that was barreling him down the rocky road of destruction, an evil cycle that seemed to have sucked him into their hell. Gurley made several pleas to the various authorities to assist her husband, but Albert became so unbearable and unlikable in the small fishing village of Mafi King that they all could have offered was pity for her and the children, along with the grim warning to leave him before something fatal happened. How could she do that? She had three children and no viable income. Whatever little savings they had was either spent because of his inability to keep a job or used by him to fund his drinking and smoking habits. 
Albert needed help desperately. And this time, she felt as if nothing was helping. It seemed he was given over to a reprobate mind. Albert, delivered from the foulest snare before, seemed to be even further entrapped by the devil's plan to steal, kill, and ultimately destroy him. One day during the summer vacation, Albert took his two sons on a hunting expedition, a dangerous journey that almost got them killed. The boys were incapable of handling the handmade guns that were used, which resulted in Roland almost shooting his brother and Jonah almost killing himself and his father. Another time, Albert took them fishing with sharp knives in their hands, resulting in several cuts from their ill-fated adventure. Not too long after that incident, he took them to see Auntie Carol, a name the, bo the boys found odd because they could not remember having an aunt by that name. Albert's erratic behavior was becoming increasingly alarming, as with each passing year, things only grew worse. News reached Gurley that Albert had carried the boys off to a deep, dark part of the countryside to visit an Obia man who had a buck. On their return from that trip, Jonah became pensive and moody, not the same child that everyone dubbed Sunshine. Gurley asked her son what could have traumatized him like that, but to no avail. She dared not ask Albert, trying to avoid another beating. At another point, Albert took Jonah to work with him and allowed him to drive the tractor through the forest all by himself, endangering his life yet again. Albert grew more and more careless and reckless with their sons, and Gurley became increasingly concerned that he was not portraying a good fatherly image for the boys. His drinking, smoking, and womanizing ways were setting a destructive example. She persisted in raising God-fearing soldiers for God's army, praying fervently against those harmful habits for her sons. However, her husband's brutality towards them seemed unabated. With no end in sight, Gurley tried many times to leave, but each time she had to run right back home as the benevolence of her family and friends were relatively short-term. Gurley's mental state was becoming unhinged. Such a, uh, such a short and pungent chapter. Yes. You get a crisp understanding of what's happening. Yeah. And that Auntie Carol boy. Mm. <laughs> they always have an Auntie Carol somewhere. They have an Auntie Carol in every store. <laughs> Father, stop it, please. Yes, you, uh, you're embarrassing yourself. You, you already want to do your own thing? Yeah, fine. Don't carry a chair by no auntie, nothing. We saw okay? that incident last month. <laughs> <laughs> that is extravagant news. <laughs> Indeed, it is. <laughs> that is extravagant news. Andy Carroll is extravagant <laughs> news. <laughs> I loved how you, I love the way you write, the way you structure that story in those nice short paragraphs, giving each paragraph having um, a story within itself. Yeah. And I liked how you structured it. I mean, I I wish we had more time for you to just sit there and read, read the whole right? book. <laughs> yes. Have you thought of doing an audio book? Uh, actually, no. But... You have such a good reading voice. I do. I do yes. like my voice, actually. <laughs> I don't think any any sane Nobody person, likes. right? I I can stand how I sounded at first. I was like, okay. that's how I sound. People, yeah, they get what wrong with your voice. <laughs> I hear and you know fingernails on on the on the chalkboard when I'm speaking. I'm like, oh, oh my god, that is what people actually hear. Yeah, but you is have that what I sound like? No, that's not what you sound like to me. You have a, a lovely speaking okay, voice. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You should think of a audio book. Okay, I would right. buy it. Wouldn't you buy it? I would buy it. And sit and listen to that. All. That's a, listen, that's a novella. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice little story. That's a good, that's a soap opera right there. 
Yeah, somebody told me that. They said that book is. Mm -hmm. I wish Tyler it's Perry juicy. could just. Oh yeah, it's juicy. Yeah, it's, it's juicy. juicy. It is a juicy book. It's it's a human book. Yes. It yes, it's it's my husband's memoir, but it could happen to anybody. Yeah. And the things that is in this book, it's what life mm -hmm. is about. I mean, you're reading there, and all I'm saying is, I wonder what happening in chapters eight. Yes. <laughs> Where, where Auntie Carol going? I wonder what is the she drive the the children drive the tractor. My God, Lord, up his mercy. By themselves, back and all. Yeah, <laughs> and girlie is so afraid. Yeah, that she don't want another beating because he really used to mercilessly beat her. Jesus Christ, people, get out, get out, get out. If you're in a domestic violence situation, get out it's not easy and as you say girly had she she tried to get out but yes. it was such a sh i mean you know sometimes the mattress weren't in yeah in terms of what they could help you do yeah because they themselves may not be in the best of situations Correct. but remember there's there are systems in place government and all of that and the funding please you know don't always only run to your relatives the abusers know where all of them live true it, it trust me it won't be long till they buy the door knocking they and not already, in a nice manner. No. They already know where all of them live. Yes. And who you went by last time and who you can't Good. go by this time. Yeah. So they know where to go. Please get the police involved. Get, uh, you know, not just your relatives involved. Get the police involved. Get the system involved, right? There's support for domestic violence. We saw, you know, lately somebody went for a protective order. It doesn't always have to be a restraining order. It can be a protective order, right? And get some help. Get whatever help you need. As as usual, we're heading into the green room. And listen, time is running away. I was having such a good time with this reading. Time is running away from us, please. We're heading into the green room. And this is a time where we share with local authors and publishers insights, information that they would need. And we're looking today as what is a book's sell sheet? A sell sheet or sales sheet is a one-page document that provides details about a book for potential retailers. It usually contains a book overview, book title, subtitle, author, illustrator, log line, brief description, your cover, your book cover, maybe a copy of it, you know, um, a book ID log block which is your publication date, your ISBN, your category, format, trim size, page count, rights available for distribution, direct sales info. So you put all of that information on a one-page sheet, whether you're sending it digitally or you're printing it out to send to the retailers and the retailers, of course, are the booksellers and all of that. Because remember, Christmas is coming and Christmas can account for up to about 30% or more of your book sales for the entire year. So if your book wasn't selling so hard this year, please spend some time focusing on your book sales for Christmas. Get your books in stock. Put your books on Digital Canopy, which is, you know, our local ebook platform in Trinidad and Tobago, open to everybody across the Caribbean and, and further. Get your books sold. So get your sales sheet or your sell sheet ready for retailers. And, you know, you can always rewatch this program and figure out what you want to put on your sales sheet for your book. As we're heading into, you know, the wrap up, we want to thank Mansa as well for their support of the show. Mansa's bookstore is right in Calder Hall, right triangle angle in Calder Hall, and their number is 2384017. You can give them a call or you can email them at mansagroup at gmail.com. And if you go and you make your purchases at Mansa, they are one of the only bookstores that's giving you a $150 back voucher for every $500 you spend. So if you haven't gotten all your books, you know, and you want at Christmas time to buy some books for the children in, the children in your life, your neighbors and your nieces and nephews and all of that, check out Mansa. You're getting $150 
dollars back from Mansa. And we also want to thank Caribbean Book Marketing Hub for their sponsorship of the Green Room. And Caribbean Book Marketing is coming out with an author's directory. So if you're an author or you know an author, please recommend them for our book um, directory, our author directory with Caribbean Book Marketing Hub, where Caribbean authors get to showcase their book and all the different products that they have. So you can scan this QR code or find Caribbean Book Marketing on Facebook and Instagram and get um, this form and register for the author directory. We want to thank you for being here with us on Book Club Corner. Every Wednesday, we'll be here chatting with a different author. But before we go, we want to ask Alicia, Alicia, where can readers get your book? Locally, they can get it at Scribbles and Scribbles Quills. And Quills. Yes, I yes. love yes. them. And Gaston Street in Chaguanas. Yes. And Stock and Shock. They have three outlets. Mm -hmm. East Skates in Arima, Movie Tongue in Port of Spain, and West Mall. Very good. We're looking and to see if we can get something in Tobago. <laughs> you have to. You must. Yes. We will chat about that. So these are some of your books standing on Shifting Sand as well as the guide, yes. right? Please look out for these books in your local bookstores standing on Shifting Sand and the guide that goes with it yes. as well as Jonah's, Jonah's Journey. journey. Yes. Get it and you know, we were speaking here with Alicia but her pen name is Sharon A. Foster. Okay, so go look for her books, get them at your local bookstores. You can probably even find Sharon on Facebook and Instagram and ask her about how Sharon, I forget what you said, how to get a book, right? On Amazon. And um, very good, on Amazon.com as well. We want to thank you for being here with us. Thank you today. so much. It, it was, was a pleasure. As usual, you know, <laughs> I, I love chatting with authors and you're so bubbly and, and so um, inviting. you such a great storyteller as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking out for that audiobook. Eh? Sharon. Okay, all right. Sharon Foster, we're yes. looking out for that. <laughs> Definitely. That'll be my to-do list. <laughs> yes, please do. So we're going to be here next week with another author. We're going to be chatting with somebody familiar in the Tobago space, Shanice Silvan, and she has a book called Mummy Dear. And we're going to have her on set next week chatting with her about her book. Shanice, we can't wait to have you here. We, I haven't seen you in a while, girl. So I can't wait for you to get here for us to chat about your book. And thank you as well, viewers. If you have missed it live on Tobago Updates, please go to our Book Club Corner YouTube channel where you'll find all our episodes with different authors, over the different seasons and you could binge watch like you do on Netflix, right? Just sit and watch the authors and take notes. The authors share such gems for authors and publishers to use um, in your experience and put in your arsenal, even for marketing. So we thank you for being here with us, Facebook, Instagram for Book Club Corner, and please support Tobago Updates. We had a recent hacking, right? Some technical issues and we want to get back where we were before so if you're on facebook just go to tobago updates on facebook like their page share their page and share the content as well and we will see you next week wednesday when we chat with shani Silvan. cheers to you alicia thank you so much <laughs> it was a, it was wonderful being here I, listen i hope you enjoy tobago it, to its fullest before oh you yes. go back oh yes i'm going i'm going out tonight <laughs> very listen people when you see her out Say, you're the lady who wrote the book, Jonah's Journey, where I could get a copy, right? Because she's heading out tonight. Be safe and enjoy. Thank you. And similarly to yours, viewing, please be safe and enjoy the Tobago Carnival season. And we'll be back again here next week when we chat with another author. Enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>